Hey, Jim Hoffman here from EMS Office Hours, and this is your Monday Minutes. Guys, today is a special Monday Minutes. I actually have an interview that I did with Rami Duckworth, and he is one of the speakers over at the EMS Web Summit that's going to be coming to you live on May 17th. So I want to just let you give you a little insight on Rami, his topic, and uh, a little bit about the EMS Web Summit. So let me go ahead and break away here, and let's listen to the interview. Hi, this is Jim Hoffman from EMS Web Summit, and I want to thank you for joining me on this quick speaker interview. Um, I hope you join us at EMS Web Summit. If you haven't heard about it, this is a live online educational event for EMS professionals and we've got 13 speakers that are going to be joining us on May 17th, 2012 and uh, you'll get some unique insight and tips and tricks and hopefully a lot more than that on a variety of EMS topics from the speakers that are going to be joining us and I actually have a speaker with us today that's going to give us some insight on himself and what he's talking about during the summit and it's Rami Duckworth and uh, Rami, uh, thanks for joining me uh, for, on this quick little interview here. And sure, thank you. Time. Um, I have a, just a quick couple of questions, Rami, just to kind of ask you, maybe give this, the listeners a, a uh, uh, an idea of what you're doing in EMS and how long you've been in EMS and things like that. So could you just kind of give the listeners a little overview of, of yourself and your background and what you do in EMS? Sure. Uh, I'm currently a career fire lieutenant and EMS coordinator for a combination fire department in Connecticut. And I've been in fire and EMS for a little over 20 years and uh, had the opportunity to, uh, in fact, I've gone out of my way to make a point to work in and with a lot of different types of agencies, um, in hospital, out hospital. And uh, I've always been fascinated by how different people approach different situations. So that's kind of led me to work with and volunteer in a variety of different circumstances, volunteer fire departments, private emergency services, like I say, hospital-based health care. Right. And uh, I'm currently uh, also a American Heart Association national faculty for ACLS for the state of Connecticut. So that kind of keeps me in touch with uh, a lot of different people. Oh, cool. Well, it's interesting you say that, Rami, because, you know, I notice a lot of the speakers that are coming on board here at the EMS uh, Web Summit really have a, a really well-rounded uh, experience in different different areas of EMS, a little bit outside of EMS, like you said, with hospitals um, and our instructors in various uh, areas, including American Heart Association and even their local uh, EMS academies. And mm -hmm. I, I, just one question. It's not really related, I guess, 100% to the EMS Web Summit, but I'd like to just kind of get your insight, and it's something I'd like to ask uh, other EMS professionals, and kind of like what you think is really the biggest challenge that you see facing EMS these days. Uh, I, I say focusing on internal challenges rather than external challenges, of which there are obviously plenty, but I think internally, um, it's best practices. I think there are a lot of areas of EMS where there's a lot of research to be done, but I think there are many aspects of what we do where we've established some great fundamentals and best practices, and we know them really well. And those are the areas where we really need to focus our efforts, where the challenge of that is we know what to do, but it's now a matter of not just talking the talk, but walking the walk. And it's a very difficult thing to do to look at some of these fundamentals um, saying something as simple as, you know, we know CPR save lives, but is everybody in our service and, and all the people that we work with along the continuum of care, is everybody doing good CPR, good basic ventilation, and, and things like that? I mean, right. there, there are plenty of challenges, but internally, in terms of things that I think we control, um, living up to best practices that we know about is the biggest challenge that I see. Yeah, I, I definitely can agree with that. And, you know, one, one thing I think that challenges us, too, is, is education in EMS, you know, where we're getting it from, uh, the varying types of education. And I'm wondering if you think something like this online-based education, uh, things like Center Learn or, and uh, education opportunities like that, do you think that this is the type of thing that should be accepted uh you know, more and more for continuing education requirements rather than just that minimum, you know, they only allow you to have whatever it is, you know, four hours or 12 hours of online-based education. Do you think it should be more widely accepted to meet? Oh, that, no that? doubt about it at all. Uh, no doubt about it at all. Things like EMS Web Summit, um, you know, the engagement level that programs like that 
uh, can make uh, certainly exceeds many of the butts in seats, everybody in the same room programs that I've seen. And I, I don't think too many people would, would argue that, um, you know, there are certainly a variety of different types of online education inv available intended for different purposes. Uh, some are a little bit more quick and dirty intended for quick access and informal training, while other education like the MS Web Summit really has that greater depth and is more polished and allows for the kind of uh, interaction and engagement uh, that's really going to uh, not just convey the information, convey, convey the education education um, that the educators trying to put out there but really lock it in place if you will make make it worthwhile for people attending yeah I'm hoping that's that's going to be the goal of, of what's going to end up happening and I'm thinking that the live interaction from EMS web summit is really going to be able to uh, really let the attendees engage uh, with the speakers you know during it by with live chatting and then hopefully in, you know live Q&A at the end of the sessions as well which you don't always get to have in some of the pre-recorded type uh, online educational venues that are out there and like you said they all have merit and I think it's it's up to the provider too to take advantage of all the different uh, you know uh, different situations and different opportunities that are available to them uh, when it comes to online uh, education um, you know, during this event, I know you've got uh, a couple of topics. You're actually going to speak twice for us, which is, I think, pretty cool. Um, <laughs> without giving too much of, like, the whole topic away and, you know, not letting that get, give them all the little secrets of, of the topics you're going to share, um, can you just maybe just pick one of them and just kind of give the attendees a little taste of what they can expect from your presentation? Well, sure. Uh, f for both uh, the topics that I'm going to be addressing, geriatrics and abdominal trauma, I'm going to be focusing on sharpening assessment skills to rapidly identify the care priorities. In, in other words, um, I take the approach that a foundation of assessment skills, which we're going to talk about, tuned to specific issues, in, in one case geriatrics and the other abdominal trauma, I think they really, that's what allows you to rapidly identify, if not diagnose, the um, the right care that needs to be initiated specific to the individual call that you happen to be on. So, so I guess in sort of, in, a, in short, assessment methods tuned to priorities of care, I find that this creates an educational session that really works for all levels of provider. You know, everybody, everywhere, in different situations, in different levels uh, that they're certified or licensed in, they all work with different bags of tricks. But at any level, we can use sharper assessment skills to help us pick the right tools available to us. So that's where I'm going to be focusing specific to the topics of uh, geriatrics and abdominal trauma. Okay, cool. Well, I think it's important, too, because I think what happens is we get a lot of that generalized, uh, you know, training and skills assessment training. I think what you're going to be providing a little bit is is given that kind of laser targeted type uh, assessment and, and things to look for when it comes to those two specific, uh, you know, topics that we encounter, you know, two, two type of patients that we can encounter out there in the field. So I'm um, looking forward to that. Um, Rami, I don't want to take up too much of your time. So, uh, of course, I want to thank you for, for joining me today. But before we go, you have anything else you want to share with any of the listeners before we head out? Um, well, for, uh, you know, ahead of the EMS Web Summit, any comments, questions, or suggestions about these topics, things that people would like me to, to focus on if they know that they're going to be attending um, or other stuff uh, related to the geriatrics and abdominal trauma topics, um, they can contact me through our, our website and blog where we do the audio and video podcasts at rescuedigest.com. And other than that, I want to thank you, Jim, for the opportunity, and I look forward to seeing everybody online at the EMS Web Summit on May 17th. Cool, cool. Well, thanks, Ryan, for joining me. Um, also, people, if you want to also mention things about the Web Summit or what Rami's talking about, you can go to the emswebsummit.com website and on the right hand side is actually a live comment wall where you can just leave comments uh, that will kind of just be ticking up as we go along and you can leave comments on the topics being discussed, the speakers, what you want to see or hear, or even talk about the sponsors and what they're doing as well. So I encourage people to go over to emswebsummit.com and take advantage of that. So uh, Rami, uh, again, thanks for joining me. Um, I look forward to seeing you again May 17th and I'm sure the listeners are going to be looking forward to it as well. So thank Thanks again for giving me your thoughts today. Thank you, Jim. Okay, so I hope uh, that gave you some insight there on Rami and the EMS Web Summit. 
Um, listen, guys, this is an exciting time, I think, for EMS to be able to bring something like this uh, live to you as an all-day event. So I hope you're going to join me and uh, Romney and uh, a bunch of other uh, presenters coming on, people like Greg Fries and uh, Kelly Grayson, Peter Canning, uh, Dan Lindmer, uh, many, many speakers, guys, we got coming on here and some great topics that they've come up with to really give some great insight into EMS and stuff that I think you're going to be able to really use uh, right away after the summit. Okay, so uh, be sure to go check it out. It's at emswebsummit.com, and you can see all the other speakers there. There are topics that I have listed so far, and uh, be sure to comment when you're there, too. We have the little sidebar there at emswebsummit.com where you can actually just comment, sort of like a flowing commentary there, and you can also jump over on Twitter, and you can check out hashtag EMS Web Summit. So we'll see you then, guys. This is Jim Hoffman for uh, EMS Office Hours and the Monday Minutes, and until next week, as always, stay safe.